This week, we explore Cat Island in the Bahamas. We were expecting this. But unfortunately, this Cat Island was named after the pirate, Arthur Cat. We anchored outside Rolly's Resort in Old Bight. Carl, the owner of Rolly's, loves cruises and welcomes them into the resort community. What you doing, honey? I'm working on our next episode. Working hard or hardly working? Working hard. Hardly working hard. <laughs> Carl hosted a bonfire on the beach. The flames are so big we couldn't get close enough to roast our marshmallows. around Old Bight. The settlement had some interesting buildings, including this church, which was the first church for freed slaves in the Bahamas. In general, Cat Island had much older buildings than the other islands we had visited. The locals told us it was one of the most historic islands in the Bahamas. It had been months since we'd ridden our bikes and our legs complained on the bumpy sandy roads. That afternoon, we moved to New Bight and enjoyed a rake and scrape, which is a genre of music in the Bahamas. Its main instruments are a gumbe drum, accordion, and a handsaw. The next day we climbed Mount Alvernia, also known as Como Hill, the highest peak in the Bahamas. At the top of the peak is the Hermitage, a monastery built by Catholic priest John Hawes, known to the locals as Father Jerome. A skilled architect and sculptor, he built the Hermitage using local stone in 1939. He used it as his own private sanctuary when he was not building other cathedrals around the Bahamas. The Hermitage is like a tiny version of a Tuscan monastery. Father Jerome was a dwarf, and the buildings were made to his size, making us feel like giants. The small stature of the building makes it seem much further away than it actually is. We found the cave that he apparently lived in. Oh yeah, it opens up. What you doing? I have broken my second pair of flip flops on this trip and I need to get retread. Hey Craig, there's more down here too. Cool. Variety. You gotta lie down. Get into the table, they'll climb on you. They're thinking about it. Greg's trying to see if goats will climb on him. They're still just thinking about it. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. It's a short walk from the protected waters of Nubite to the exposed ocean side of the island. Seeing plastic on the windward beaches is unfortunately common in the Bahamas. The Caribbean islands, cruisers, and the Bahamas all have one thing in common, a lack of easily available fresh water. It's challenging to control trash in places where buying single-use plastics is cheaper than purchasing the water needed to wash reusable items. 
The lack of water filtration and reverse osmosis plants means that many people are still dependent on buying bottled water for clean drinking water. Even though the majority of the garbage found on this beach did not originate from the Bahamas, the country is still taking action. There is an initiative to ban the use of single-use plastics and styrofoam by 2020. Glass bottles dumped into the ocean are pounded by the relentless waves, creating beautiful pieces of sea glass. The easiest way to find this treasure is at low tide where the rocks congregate. Armbrister's Great House, built in the mid to late 1700s, is the second oldest structure in the Bahamas. This mansion was burned down by enslaved Africans during a revolt in 1834, just prior to the emancipation that same year. Not all fun and games on cats, okay? Herky is incontinent, which means we don't have pillows and we often sit down in patches of wetness. Yeah. But he's getting better. His belly's dry for the first time in days. Thanks. Nicely done, Herky. We're proud of you, buddy. That night we headed to Jennifer to use their inverter so I could have a much needed haircut. Unfortunately, I learned too late that their inverter isn't a pure sine wave either. Oh, it's coming along. Patch there, right? Yeah, yeah. Hang on, wait, wait. Oh my god. Yeah, let's try a patch. Oh my god, it's down. It's down to the. Did you mean to get it that close? Yeah, yeah. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. With our engine issues, we decided to minimize our use of the motor and started sailing on and off anchor from New Bite. Our next stop was Orange Creek, the northern tip of Cat Island. Anchoring under sail requires good timing and teamwork. First the Genoa gets furled, then the main sheet is brought in. I go to the mast to man the mainsail. Greg turns into the wind and runs up to drop the anchor as I drop the mainsail. We're exploring Orange Creek. We got a lobster down there. And the prettiest reef we've seen. The reefs around our anchorage were a pleasant surprise. Our charts had mistakenly marked them as rocks, but they were some of the most beautiful and untouched reefs we'd seen in the Bahamas. It was especially nice given the state of the coral we'd recently seen in Rum Key. It's the last day of lobster season here in the Bahamas and we caught a lobster, our first. Our first and potentially last, but maybe not. We're going to keep exploring this Orange Creek. Okay, take two. Now we have a bucket. <laughs> Now lobster. Our last night in Cat Island happened to coincide with the Cat Island Humane Society benefit. 
We were excited to attend as we felt incredibly grateful to the Humane Society for all their help in getting Herky to Nassau. We enjoyed ice cream, music, and hoopla, and offered to give an impromptu acro performance. Hey, what'd you get? After our performance, we were happy to give a bunch of little ones their first flight. When sailing off anchor, I shorten the road, Diana then hoists the main as I quickly pull up the rest of the anchor. Then I run to the helm and try to encourage the boat onto the appropriate tack. Unfortunately, we haven't quite figured this out and often need to tack or jive to get her on track. Have you had experience sailing on and off anchor? Because we'd appreciate any feedback, comments, or advice. Thanks for watching.